Hey guys, welcome to Layla Teachers. Today we'll speak about the decarboxylation uh, of amino acids and some carriers. Some synthetic pathways, they require the addition of single carbon groups that exist in a variety of oxidation states, including formyl, methanyl, methylene, and methyl. Right? They're single carbon groups. So these single carbon groups can be transferred from carrier compounds such as THF, which is tetrahydrofolic acid, and SAM, which is s adenosyl l methionine We will speak about SAM in another video. Um, so these uh, carrier compounds, they transfer the carbons to specific structures that are being synthesized or modified. The one carbon pool refers to single carbon units attached to this group of carriers. You can see the structure of THF. Folic acid is a carrier of one carbon units. So the active form of folic acid is THF. It is produced from folate by dihydrofolate reductase in a two-step reaction requiring two NADPH. So the carbon unit carried by THF is bound to nitrogen N5 or N10. The numbers are the uh, locations or to both N5 and N10. An example is histidine. With the help of histidase, it breaks down to urocanic acid, which is a form of deamination. This will further become n formumino glutamate. And formumino means that it has a single carbon. It gets attached to it and it becomes 5 formumino tetrahydro folate. Antifolates are a class of anti-metabolite medications that antagonize the actions of folic acid, which is vitamin B9. Folic acid's primary function in the body is as a cofactor to various methyl transferases involved in serine, methionine, thymidine, and purine biosynthesis. Antifolates, they inhibit cell division, DNA-RNA synthesis, repair and protein synthesis. Some, such as proguanil, pyrimethamine, and trimethoprim, selectively inhibit folate's actions in microbial organisms. Trimethoprim is, a, is an antibiotic. Uh, the majority of antifolates work by inhibiting dihydrofolate reductase, which, if you remember, is... When folic acid is turned to the active form tetrahydrofolic acid. Moving on to decarboxylation. So removal of the carboxyl group is known as decarboxylation. You release carbon dioxide. An example is histidine being decarboxylated to histamine by decarboxylase. It occurs in mast cells and basophils and it is released in allergic reactions for inflammatory responses. We have drugs like anti-allergics known as antihistamines. So this removal of from the alpha keto acids derived from leucine, valine and isoleucine is ca catalyzed by a single multi-enzyme complex which is known as branched chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex. This complex uses thiamine pyrophosphate, lipoic acid, FAD, NAD+, and coenzyme A as its coenzymes. An inherited deficiency of branched-chain alpha-keto acid dehydrogenase results in accumulation of the branched-chain alpha-keto acid substrates in the urine. Their sweet odor prompted the name maple syrup urine disease, which has neurological manifestations. A bit about polyamines, they are compounds with more than one amine group. So the principal examples are the triamine and the tetraamine, spermidine and spermine. They are structurally and biosynthetically related to the diamines, putrescine and cadaverin. Polyamine metabolism is regulated by the activity of the enzyme ornithine decarboxylase. Polyamines are found in high concentrations in brain. Okay, we start with ornithine, which if you remember from the last video, it is a part of the urea cycle. 
with only seen decarboxylase, we lose carbon dioxide and we get putrescine, which is the precursor to the polyamines. With the help of spermidine synthase, you will get spermidine. And with the help of spermine synthase, you will get spermine. It's quite easy. Some functions are they are modulators of ion channels, they can enhance permeability of blood brain barrier, and they promote growth. Okay, guys, I'm done with this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Thank you.